As one leader prepares to leave the White House, its next occupant is preparing to change course after one of the most controversial presidencies in American history. It's a changing Middle East facing the next U.S. president, and Joe Biden has indicated that he wants to reassess America's relationship with Saudi Arabia and resurrect the Iran nuclear deal, something that could prove an uphill battle. The key challenge facing the Biden administration will be to try to put out the fires that Donald Trump has triggered in the Middle East. Trump's decision to walk away from the so-called Iran nuclear deal had a particularly big impact, ending U.S. support for the Obama-era agreement designed to curb Iran's nuclear ambitions led to reimpose sanctions which, coupled with COVID-19, had a devastating effect on the major oil producer's economy. We have the Iranian presidential election coming up in June of 2021. Does whether the country choose a hardline or moderate president affect Biden's ability to resurrect the nuclear deal? It sticks to, as they say, to tango. We still don't know whether the Iranian are ready for it. If there is a real concrete diplomatic process underway in early 2021, that in itself could um, trigger um, more voters to turn out uh, and vote, for example, for a figure that is similar um, to President Rouhani and has a similar agenda in terms of diplomacy and engagement. While such an outcome could prove beneficial for Biden, the president-elect has also indicated that any reworked Iran deal would involve some form of regional de-escalation, which may present a unique opportunity for Gulf allies. If the UAE and Saudi Arabia want to play their cards smartly, then they would pivot to trying to influence the United States to obtain more concessions from Iran as part of a regional negotiation track. Saudi Arabia will also have to adjust to a post-Trump era where Biden wants to stand up for human rights, even if the overall relationship is likely to remain unchanged. I don't think you're going to see the love affair that we have seen in the past four years between President Donald Trump and the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. But while Riyadh will remain a key security partner for the U.S., neighboring Abu Dhabi could emerge as a new regional darling after becoming the first Arab country in decades to normalize ties with Israel, which Saudi Arabia hasn't yet committed to doing. And after signing the Abraham Accord and after getting the F-35, I think the UAE probably in a better position than all others. And of course, relying on Gulf partners may be a necessity rather than a choice as Biden enters the White House with limited political capital that's likely to be spent elsewhere. Jim Stenman, CGTN, Dubai.